What's going on, good people? Mary Young with Fantastic Forum here at WonderCon 2023, and we are here with Josh Isaac, uh, who is the author of The Very Final Last Girls, and we wanted to talk to him and give you the opportunity to talk about your book. Sure. So, The Very Final Last Girls is my new graphic novel from Darby Pop Publishing. Uh, it's a fully contained graphic novel, beginning, middle, end. Mm -hmm. Uh, it drives me crazy as a fan when you pick up something and it's like, buy the next one, and you're like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it's but it's about the girls who survive horror films, right? Mm -hmm. So like the survivors of Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. night, Nightmare, I was going to say Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> night, <laughs> that one too? No, not, <laughs> not that one. Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Saw, etc. Mm -hmm. They all come together for group therapy and then start getting picked off one by one. Oh, wow. It's pretty violent, uh, with a lot of humor, a lot of heart kind of in the vein of like Buffy, if mm -hmm. that's your jam. Mm -hmm. um, the dumb X meets Y is it's Cabin in the Woods, one of my favorite films, mm -hmm. meets X-Men, one of my favorite comic books. Mm -hmm. And I say X-Men because, in my opinion, if one were to survive a horror film, you would need to have either some super, some special skills or mm -hmm. to pick up special skills to get through it. I hear so you. So you got these teenagers uh, from different walks of life from all over the country who have to come together, put aside their differences, mm -hmm. uh, or else heads are gonna roll. And in fact, literally heads do roll. Like now, I feel like someone who writes a book like this has to be uh, a fan of the horror genre. Yes, sir. So you know, tell me like, uh, what are some of the kind of horror movies that you grew up watching that kind of instilled that love, and what are some of your like all-time favorites? Great question. So when I was a kid, and this will date me, uh, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, that was the thing, and it scared the crap out of me. One hundred percent. I remember like. <laughs> The, the way kids, like little kids, like mm -hmm. when I was in first grade, kids dress up like Black Panther mm -hmm. or uh, Iron Man today. Mm -hmm. Kids were dressing up as Freddy Krueger, you know, 100%. child killer Freddy Krueger. Yeah. <laughs> I never watched the films. I was scared. I wasn't allowed to. But then as an adult, I saw Cabin in the Woods, as I mentioned, and that film just blew my mind. Oh, wow. And then I went back and I watched all the classics and I just fell in love. Cabin in the Woods, my all-time favorite, mm -hmm. but like classics like The Shining, mm -hmm. um, the, the original Halloween, mm -hmm. the original Nightmare, uh, I was going to say Nightmare Before Christmas again, the, <laughs> the original Nightmare on Elm Street, my, my personal favorite, let me find it in the book, uh -huh. where is it, here it is, uh, Nightmare 3, Dream Warriors, which in my oh. opinion is one of the best X-Men movies ever made. <laughs> um, Evil Dead, yeah. you know, Evil Dead 2, Army yeah. of Darkness, like all the great ones. Recently, um, I loved, it's a little bit of an outlier, but I love Last Night in Soho. Okay. I just thought that was so brilliant and so cool. Okay. Uh, I'm a fan of anything Edgar Wright does. I, I, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. So tell us a, a little bit more about the book in regards to, like, you know, how do all, all those sensibilities play into the story that you've created and what it is, what, how does it, uh, especially I guess resonate with horror fans. So to get super like nerdy writerly about yeah. it, this is a you know Joseph Campbell esque hero's journey. Okay. The lead character Megan, uh, she's a zombie survivor, and in my opinion, one doesn't survive a bunch of zombies without knowing your way around some weapons. Right. She's a survivalist. She grew up in Colorado, off the grid. Her parents were like, we don't want anything to do with the government. We don't want anything. Oh, wow. Like you know, homeschooled, and now it's like, all right. And then the government's like, hey, come here. We need to you know rehabilitate you, get you back in society. And she's like, oh, I don't trust you guys. Uh -huh. I don't trust you guys at all. Um, and additionally, she doesn't trust any of the other kids. Mm -hmm. But as we go through the story, so the, the opening of the book is like the last five minutes of any zombie movie ever. Got it. She survives, the government swoops in and saves her. And then as she meets the other kids, she realize, she starts to learn their stories. So like, survived a, uh, a sadistic priest. Mm -hmm. Saw mm -hmm. a little bit The Exorcist, if I ever mm -hmm. do the sequel. Um, <laughs> survived a summer camp slasher. Mm -hmm. Jason Voorhees, mm -hmm. obviously I can't say that, mm -hmm. but there's a little bit of a twist to that mythology as well. Got it. Not all these kids are reliable narrators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Survived like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. One of my favorite wow. films is uh, Robert Rodriguez's is The Faculty. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of a deeper cut, but yeah. I love that film. And uh, Nightmare Warlock, of course, Freddy Krueger. Gotcha. Um, so as we go through, we hear their backstories and we see them play in flashback, but then it's also like other little Easter eggs as well. The main villain, uh, who we call the Tattered Man, has like, you know, kind of a Michael Myers uh, sensibility to him. He walks around with a machete. He's got his face, you know how like Pinhead's got the pins going out. I was like, well, it'd be cool if he had like holes going into his head. Mm. Um, which is a little bit of a clue as to his true identity, but he's kind of, and his mouth is sewn shut, so he's like the silent, you know, killer who just like stalks the victims. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then as you go through, there's like nods to other films. Um, the ending is very much inspired by Cabin in the Woods, so you'll see nods to like Hitchcock, who's one of my favorite directors, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Stephen King, like, you know, there's a red balloon that floats by. Mm -hmm. um, the beginning of the book, you learn they're, you know, the equivalent of the Professor X type character, the, the doctor who treats these kids, the, child's, mm -hmm. the child therapist, uh, mm -hmm. you know, she survived a sorority massacre up in Maine. Oh, wow. Carrie. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and like if I ever get to do the sequel, like the two movies that I, that I'm thinking about a lot in my head are uh, Carrie and the Blair Witch Project. Like gotcha. those are, like I sort of touch on Carrie. Um, there's some bonus content I I hid in the book. Eagle-eyed okay. readers might find it. Maybe mm. a link to some bonus content on Mis the web. Mi oh, yes. mysteries inside of mysteries. Exactly. Okay. Um, and it sets up a potential sequel, which I'm hoping to do with them. Um, and you'll see it's like oh this character's named Blair, she's got a camera, she's going off into the woods. Okay. Like, okay. she doesn't appear in the main book, but if I ever do the sequel, we're gotcha. going to hopefully meet her. Got you. And, and how long have you been, like, formulating this idea? Before I answer that question, I, I, I do want to just clarify, even though I am thinking about the sequel and we got it in the planning process, the book is a standalone graphic novel. Absolutely. Beginning, middle, end. The end is very satisfying. You'll be very happy, uh, hopefully, where Megan winds up. Can't say much about the other kids. Okay. Um, <laughs> But uh, to answer the question, 10 years. Um, I watched Cabin in the Woods. I was like, this is brilliant. I fell in love. I had this idea. Uh, Z Crockett, the main artist on the book, she and I had been working together for a long time on other projects. We just started doing it kind of in our spare time, kind of, you know, slow whenever we could. We got the first four issues. Um, and then at that point, I reached out to uh, Jeff, the publisher of Darby Pop, who I'd known from previous work. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, yeah, I want to do this. And it's been awesome. Um, we had a second artist step onto the book to finish up. And yeah, from conception to publishing about 10 years, uh, it will not take as long for the sequel. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Good. But uh, but yeah, again, it's a totally standalone story. All right, cool. And you actually do have another book here. Yes. You want to tell us just a little bit sure. about that? So this is Charm City. This is not out yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's from Scout Comics, mm -hmm. uh, another great indie publisher. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is even darker than the very final Last Girls, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, it's much more grounded. Mm -hmm. um, the quick S X, excuse me, X meets Y pitch is it would be Jessica Jones meets Harry Potter. Um, it's about a music reporter in Baltimore. I used to be a music reporter. Oh, wow. I'm originally from Maryland. Gotcha. So this is actually the most personal thing I've ever written. There it is. Um, and she's estranged from her community of, you know, underground witches, magic users. The rest of the world doesn't know about them. Mm -hmm. And then bodies start dropping. And uh, her brother, who is the only one in the community she still talks to, she's like, look, you got connections to the cops, you're a reporter. She's like, I'm a music journalist. I don't, I don't have any of that. But he's like, you got to help us. People are being killed and we don't know why. Eventually she gets roped in. It's a serial killer murder mystery. Very much also in influenced by one of my all-time favorite comics, Batman the Long Halloween. Nice, nice. So, and uh, Josh, if people want to go and check out any of this stuff, sure. Let them know where where can they go so find the you. The best way to find me is my Instagram uh, at j e i s e r i k e uh, at j Isaac. My I'm the only Isaac making comics. You can just Google <laughs> my name uh, and you'll easily find me. I'm very accessible. Uh, and for everybody who bought the book over the weekend, thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody who flipped through, who snapped the Instagram, thank you sincerely. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. There it is. Thank you for your time, Josh. I appreciate you. All right, Josh Isaac, good people. Thank you so much. Thank you all.